I don't know either. All right. I'm not back. Good evening. I'd like to welcome everybody to North Brantford Planning and Zoning Commission uh, regular meeting for Thursday, January 16th. In attendance are regular members Galdemzi, Mace, and Di Francesco. And do I have our time? Uh, first order of business is the minutes from December 12th, who I think everybody was here except for Ron and Trish. Yep. So we can do that. Where was I? Seems like there is. Yeah, let's check that out. Yeah. Oh, yeah, yeah. You know, Trish was here. Yeah, because I had this grog meeting first. I was here. Yeah, so we'll get. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Maybe you just came in. Oh. Yeah. Oh, after. So, All right, that's one change. Yeah. Okay. It's hard to keep track of. Catch? Yeah, because he even has you. Yeah, you made a motion. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Okay. Yeah. So he wants to make a motion to, and to make and then yeah. to amend it to the Trish was. I make a motion to accept the minutes of the December twelfth meeting with the with the revision to indicate that Trish was was present that day. I'll second. Um, any discussion? All in favor? Aye. Aye. Any opposed? Seeing none, that passes four to zero. Okay. So we're going to have a discussion regarding requirements of home occupation, section 44-3-5 of the zoning regulations. Yes. So. Um, So I just want to preface this that Tom Hogarty is um, still out, um, so I'm filling in for the zoning enforcement officer. So he may deal with this on a regular basis, but I just wasn't sure kind of how to handle it, which is why I talked with the town attorney. She recommended that I just bring it to the commission. So um, uh, there's resident Owen Little who's here this evening who has an interest in selling firearms from his house, which again, I believe that this already happened, I know that this already happens in town. This section of the, um, so the, the process would be for a home occupation that someone would fill out a zoning permit application, which he's done. Um, I have that here. Where I was getting hung up is in our zoning regulation, under customary home occupation, um, it says no finished consumer goods shall be acquired outside the dwelling unit for sale in connection with the home occupation. Oh, say that again. Yeah, Is that yeah. written somewhere so I can yeah, read it's, it? it's in your package. It's on the back side of the sheet that Terry provided. Hmm. Oh, yeah, which one? So the double side? Oh, yeah. it's double sided. Oh, yes, yeah, so it's 44.3.5. Forty-four. I don't even know what that means. That's why I'm like, right. I need to read this. That's why I would four. Shall be acquired. Okay. That's no finished consumer so goods shall be acquired outside the dwelling unit so for sale. Now I don't know when this regulation was written. I believe that it goes back well before, like the internet and you know how times have changed, where people don't. People don't need to have someone come to their house to purchase an item. They can, you know, sell something over the internet and just ship it. Um, and in the description provided um, by Mr. Little, I'll just say, I'll just read this. I would formally like to request to apply for an FFL permit. My intention is to purchase firearms from a private setting, then store them in the above residence, clean them, and make any repairs needed. I will be logging them in and complying with all state and federal laws and requirements. When said firearm is ready for sale, the firearm will be placed on the following sites, meaning internet sites, gunbroker.com and Guns International. When all requirements are met, the firearm will be shipped to an FFL dealer of the buyer's choice. There will be a limited amount of private sales done from the above address. There will be no signs or advertisement on the outside of the above address. Just for my learning, what's FFL mean? Federal firearms. Federal firearms license. Oh, all right. 
So that's the other component of this. That's a customary home occupation. Yeah, I was it's I customary. Want to back up to see first. Okay. To understand that this can even occur number one and then talk about. So the definitions on the on the forty four point two. Yeah. Home industry is an additional industry design. Let me see if it's also in. It's not defined in another section of the regs. That's what I was just looking at. So you said this already occurs in town? Yes. Just the, the, the storing part or the selling part or both? The selling part as well. It's, and it was done, I, I believe Tom handled it by having the the federal government because they have very strict stringent regulation and their own licenses mm -hmm. and I've been talking with the person who's been reviewing Mr. Little's application as well because they require local sign off before they issue a federal license obviously they want to make sure that the local municipality is all set so I believe with prior applications a lot of those were just ha handled by the federal process so, uh, so I'm reading like if you read the first four, so like when I read that for the one by itself, it looks like you can't do anything. I mean, it says no finished consumer goods shall be acquired outside the dwelling says. unit <laughs> for sale in connection with a home occupation. So, I mean, if you're thinking that, my thinking to to try and translate that in my mind was. You can't purchase a product, bring it in your home, and not do anything to it, but then just tur only turn around and resell it. You act right. So you can buy ingredients to make cookies, and then you can sell the cookies because you're not you're buying the chocolate chips, but you're not reselling just the chocolate chips right. as mm -hmm. they are. You're making it into a new product. Yeah. But that makes sense. But and that's where with worried. like the firearm, yeah. it was like the firearm's coming into the house, and then it's just going back out. Mm -hmm. But it's not. He's refurbishing and doing all that work to it, so it's not. So it's not like getting. You're buying. You're, you're, a bunch it's of not like buying a box of cookies and selling right. the so cookies. Right. So that and yeah. that's right. So you know, I mean, I mean, if you if you bought a box of cookies and decorated with sprinkles, you know, you're not selling that. Can you re read the statement of use or whatever the statement from John. Uh, the description of. Description. Uh, Here you are. My intention is to purchase firearms from a private setting. Yeah. yeah. Oh, okay, you have it. <laughs> so as long as the person, so let's just go through, let's go through the first four. As okay. long as the person's not, in, uh, there's a non-resident uh, engaged in the yeah, conduct okay. of the occupation. Which is, yeah. Yeah. Right. The occupation mm -hmm. shall not carry the residential character of the premises, which doesn't sound like it will. Mm -hmm. No signage. No signage. The floor area like conducted out shall not exceed one third of the floor area of the dwelling unit or 400 square feet, with whichever is less. So I'm going to make an assumption that there's not, you know, I mean, there's probably needs no square footage or very limited. Mm -hmm. The portion of the dwelling unit used for the conduct of the op op occupation shall be confined to one floor, which I don't think it is. And then there's no, so I'm just, I just think it's basically you couldn't order a firearm. And and then just and then just put it back up and resell. You you have to do something to it. So if he's refurbishing, changing grips, redoing the mechanism in, inside of it, and, mm -hmm. and then putting them up, I, I think that falls within this forty four point three point five. Just my thought. So. I mean, I want to agree, and then also I feel like I, like you mentioned, like the sign of the times. I mean, I'm sure there's enough of us who you know get something off of a website or eBay or something, you're like, man, I'm gonna turn around and sell it. I, like, I, I think, yeah, it's a little way too broad and maybe outdated, it, so I agree he's doing so something I know to it. The, I think there, and I know, I know of somebody who in town doesn't do it now, but previously did it, uh, was doing the same exact thing that, so, and the person that did it, um, <coughs> most likely would have went through all these regulations. Now this is going a, w a ways back. So I think he was previously. I, mean, he was I think anyway, that's the same. Yeah. Well, he was previously. I, I yeah. you know, he was a family member. 
Oh. Who's I think this is trying to prevent free. you from going out and buying like a hundred yeah. refrigerators, it keeping them sense. in the box, and then selling the refrigerators yes. out of your yeah. garage. I think this is very different than that. Okay. Did, did, you, did you pass this through our, uh, our legal bill? Yes. They, she wanted me to talk with you to get your interpretation. Yeah, that's what I'm interpreting. It's, it, okay. if, if, you were, if you were to take a firearm and just order it mm -hmm. and ship it, mm -hmm. you know, just be the middleman, I would say that's, that's not what this is for. Yeah. They, would, they wouldn't fall under here. But if you're taking them in and doing some work too yeah. long, said that. Yeah. 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 I, think, I think it would, I, I, I think it fits in there. Yeah. Okay. Well, that uh, falls underneath his, his layer of intent here, too. Mm -hmm. Yeah. That okay. everything he brings in, he's going to service. So it makes sense that everything you're going to bring in, you're going to do something, too. And, yeah. So the next step would be for, for, for the applicants, you're going to run that, you're going to say, well, we, Yes, uh, and then I can issue the zoning permit. Right. But do you have to go back to the lawyer first? No. Okay. All right, perfect. Good. Okay. Always interesting. What's that? I'll meet with you tomorrow. Yes, that sounds okay. good. Thank you yes. very much. Thank, Thank you. Thanks. 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 Thank you. Yep. Thanks for your time. Okay. Uh, that's done. Other business. Discussion regarding possible zone change for 26 Mansfield Drive from B3 R40. Okay, so this is also in your packet. Yep. So just some quick context of this location and then history. Um, so this parcel is at the towards the end of Mansfield Drive, which is off of Middletown Avenue near Northford Center. Where are we? Um, oh, you talked about where the, like where the post office is? Like where the post office is? Yes. I mean, yes. No, I'm, sorry. I'm sorry. Way in the back there where the condos are? Yes. Oh, okay. Yeah. Yes. Okay. So you yeah. cannot see it from Middletown Ave. No. Correct. No. Okay. Right. So is that R40? Is it? Is that R40? These are all the condos, correct? Yes. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Those, the big brown patch, is it all the condos? <clears throat> yeah. Okay. okay. All right. So, oh, um, R40P that zoning no longer exists, but that's neither here nor there. Um, the the condos exist. The same entity that owns the, that parcel with those condos owns the parcel that's zoned B3. Mm -hmm. I met with them, and Kurt and I met with them a few weeks ago because they, right, right now there's nothing on that parcel. There's like some storage. It's kind of, it's not ideal. Mm -hmm. They're hoping to put, um, some kind of like a storage or like a shed to store people's trash cans or like a larger dumpster so that instead of having the trash trucks, I don't know exactly how it works right now, but go around to numerous locations, they could actually just go right to the end of Mansfield Drive in that cul-de-sac area and pick up the trash there. The challenge is, is that it's zoned B3, so they we need like a primary principal use. And if you just put like a shed out there, it doesn't doesn't match and realistically I don't know the, the story goes that it was zoned v3 years ago because at one point they were looking at putting a barber shop museum there again wow, that's interesting. seems kind of like a unique spot because it's not on the main road it's not visible from the main road but my thinking was if the zone was changed to R40 and then it was combined with the R40P, at least then it would be, it's owned by the same Special. entity, it would be consistent with the surrounding area and just seems to make more sense. I, I really don't see any benefit of keeping it B3 because having commercial <coughs> way back there at the end. Yeah, because I mean, yeah. that's behind well, the Northford Road. But in that, would, I mean, I'm not, I, I'm, not, I'm not sure about the B3, but our versus R40, but even for storage, even if they wanted to expand, when say they wanted to add some more units, I don't know, I mean, they might be able to put it, no, they couldn't do it on B3, it depends on the size of it, right? They couldn't do any, so making it R40 right. would give right. an opportunity, right. if they wanted to expand a little bit, um, to do that, and it fits within the other R40s there, yeah. Yeah. And, if it's, and if it was only B3 because of, some potential use, mm -hmm. yeah. and if, if there's a use for R40 for sure, whether it's for storage, you know, I mean, if, if it's for storage for um, 
the uh, Hondas. waste man, you know, make, to pick up. Mm -hmm. It's a lot better at four o'clock in the morning here, beep, 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 in, in, in exactly. the condo area. So I think it would be a better yeah. quality of life for those that live there. So, I mean, I don't see there's a reason why not to change it. Correct. You know? Okay. Uh, okay. Yeah. Would the, thoughts? and again, this is coming from me, but would the commission maybe entertain being the applicant on that? Or would you want the property owner to request the change? I, think, I, mean, I don't think so. We could do the applicant came, oh, but the applicant came to you or no? They came, they came to me um, only to discuss could they put this stored unit on that parcel. Right. And that's where, again, black and white zoning, what's the principal use of that? It's not business related. It's just a storage facility. So, but I get their larger I'm, purpose. I, 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 I go back to the point Trish always makes with precedent and stuff. Mm -hmm. you know, it's just like if it's in our best interest of the town, I think we lead it. But if it's not in our yeah. best interest, we just have the applicant do it. I mean, that's how I feel about it. Yeah, and it's more about your point about precedent. And then it's like, well, you did it, you know. Yeah, you did you it for did this, it you didn't do it. Like, what are you doing? Mm -hmm. I think that's a great point. I don't feel like so. way on that. I'll go, yeah. I'll go with the flow. Okay. I, I think for that, that. Yeah. That reason only. I mean, yeah. that's, it's if just it was more about we, procedural if it was precedent. If it was something yeah. we identified that we wanted to make a change, yeah, I agree. this came to us from mm -hmm. somebody else. Yeah. I mean, it, it, I mean, yeah. we should build or correct on that. Okay. Yeah. 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 So. Okay. Right. Great. Thank you. All right. The last thing. We, oh, yeah. So we have a re revised site plan for 2400 Fox Inn Road, which is Capone's Pizza Bar. Town and Country Shopping Plaza. All right. Okay, so this is a pizza restaurant that exists today. It's on Route 80, heading towards Guilford, um, in the same, well, in the plaza adjacent to Earl's Hardware. If you're familiar with it. So, Bones is on the end of the plaza, the, the farthest to the right, if you're looking at it. And they are looking to expand into the uh, retail space to the left. Oh wow! And so they'd like. To, so currently they have That's a bar, uh, obviously the kitchen, a dining room, storage and prep area, et cetera. And they'd like to expand to create another bar and a lounge area where they could also set up tables for private functions. So the reason why I wanted the commission to just look at this is because of the parking question and just make sure that you guys were on board with this, um, given that there has been issues with parking in town at restaurants in the past. So I spoke with Nick Capone, the owner, and asked him to just talk with the adjacent business owners, property owners, to make sure, because I think I included the aerial photo. So in the, at 2400, where Capone's is, there's only 36 spaces mm -hmm. on that parcel in the front. And based on the existing patron floor area and the new addition, the proposed patron floor area, they would need uh, about 53 parking spaces. Mm -hmm. But just in, for that. Just just for for that. that. And there's 36 for everyone? Yes. Okay. And now their hours are different yeah. than yeah, yeah. the other businesses. But oh, yeah, and, um, our regulations do allow for the commission to not require that those spaces exist, you know, in, uh, and well, it doesn't require them to exist. They could actually be located off site or they could show that they could build more later. Mm -hmm. In reality, they're not going to be able to build more later. Like yeah. building behind the, the plaza building doesn't make sense. It's too narrow to try and drive through. It's not well lit. So the, the best option, it seems, is to have parking at the hardware store because, again, they would most likely be closed yeah. during the business hours. The, hard, the hardware store is 2410, right? Yes. And there are 33 spaces over there. Do we know the hours of the hardware store versus Capone's right now? No. Now, Carrie, you said I spent a lot of time the there. I think if you can look it up. I think on the on the weekdays are I think they're only open to six. Okay. Hardware store. Yeah, it's maybe seven. But you could I mean you could check it up there. Does does the 
the ADA, is it based on, is it of some fraction of the, the total amount required? Um, like, like with question. this, does it have to include like the calculation of 53, even though we don't have 53? I just wondered that, you know. For handicap know. accessible yeah. spaces? I believe it's a percentage. But it's not, it's I not on it's the, like you wouldn't have to go to each and say, like th this is, there's only 36, but you would need 53, you have to base it on 53, I guess. Is so what our parking spaces are based on patron floor area. Yeah, okay. So one space per 50 square feet of patron floor area. Yeah. I think the ADA accessible is something similar. I, I don't know what the ratio yeah. is though. Okay. It's it's probably ex it probably right. meets it now because you're not increasing the floor area. You're just right, but that's a good point. Just to make well, sure that there are. Because if if they're not their hours overlap building, a lot. Right. No, oh, but, right. it, but they're just but the floor area doesn't change. Their hours overlap no, but a lot. It, 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 yeah, well, no, that's true. Yeah. The floor area yeah. is actually changing because it's getting bigger. It's because well, it's a restaurant, it's calculated differently. It's a good thing just to revisit yeah, to make sure it that it may, it may impact that's a really that. good point. If you need two more handicapped, then you're yeah. actually down to 34, I I, I not 36. I thought ADA was based on if you have X amount of parking spaces, there's a percentage, you know, oh, like yeah. if there's 20, you need yeah. two. If, if there's 40, you need four. I, I don't know. I mean, I thought there was a percentage mm -hmm. that when somebody brought in an application. Now, Gary, how many uh, businesses are in that building that they're in? So there are counting Capones, I would guess. There's a florist. I think there's a barber. Are you talking about just 2,400? Yes. Yeah. Depending on how many different businesses I think there's there four are, they or five. Are covered by that because there's so many. Because oh. usually it's like, yeah. okay, you have this business, you need something over here. You yeah. have this business, you need something mm -hmm. here. So I think they might already be covered on that, even with the increase. Yeah, I, I wasn't sure. sure. The only reason I, that triggered me is when you said that. Oh, you talking about they the would, handicap? Based yeah. on this, they oh, would okay. need 53, and I'm wondering, oh, I wonder if that means they need more. Well, the only, it looks handicap. like they only have two. You know, even though they have two right now. Yeah. Well, you know, different than, um, I think it's a good thing to revisit. If you look at a bunch of different plazas in town that have a, like, a bunch of businesses next to each other, like the handicapped are all scattered through depending on where they are. Yeah. Well, you have those handicapped spaces there, but it's like the overflow or whatever it might be could be in adjacent parking lot or whatever. Mm -hmm. Can I just read the hours? Because I think it's fine. Just want to. So like the hardware store is open until 6 every day. And Capone's is... Um, like till like Thursday, Friday, Sunday, Wednesday, they open at noon till you know eleven. I feel like that's still okay because by the time Capone's gets busy yeah, that's for dinner, yeah. the hardware store is closed. Because I don't want the hardware store to agree to it and be like, well, now I have no parking for my business. Is, right? Is everyone thinking the same in terms does, of? Does Capone's own? Which do they own all these? No. They just they're, own theirs? They lease. They they're just leasing these two spaces. The twenty twenty four hundred. Yes. So, if, if so, is he going to talk to the owner about overflow parking? He would talk to the owner of Earl. Uh, talk with Earl. Of, at the hardware hard store. store. Which does somebody have to talk to the barber and the other the, the other places that are twenty four hundred? I'm just saying I don't want. I mean. <coughs> We need some, I, I feel we need some, right? There's, so you got Capone's and he's going to expand. Not just Capone's, it's two little businesses, right? Mm -hmm, at least, yeah. So, I mean, I would recommend that he talk to the actually owner of the plaza mm -hmm. to make sure he's comfortable with his plan, saying, okay, well. Right. I mean, is, yeah. is 2,400 and 2,410 by the same owner, right? No, I don't think so. They're not? No, the, well, the owner of 2,400 is out of Newtown, Connecticut. Because the only thing I'm saying is that if you're gonna, if if um, True Value is leasing from some, if, if 2410, if he's leasing that there, he can go in and talk to the, say, hey, you know, I might be, be some overflow parking here, but I don't think he's the right one to talk to. I mean, I think it'd be the owner of 2410. Yes, I think I think Earl owns that building. I'm pretty sure yeah. that he does. He owns, owns Earl owns 2410. So the I asked Nick Capone to oh, talk okay. to Oh, okay. All right. Owner. Okay. All right. All right. Yeah. If he owns it, then that's that's the only thing I was concerned about. I thought I thought right. True Value might be leasing the building. I see. He owns the package store. He leases it. 
Okay. Okay. Yeah, if he's the okay. owner, that's all. Okay. That's, yeah, because I just didn't want right. uh, uh, somebody who owns the right. business. Right, a tenant uh, approval. Right. But that and the same thing with the other businesses there, even though they probably shouldn't have any overlap, but there should be some kind of feedback because yeah. if it's, it's a good yeah. point. I mean, even, mm -hmm. even the package store, I mean, if it's filled here, they're going to park over here. Yeah. So right. I'm just not going to yeah. park on the street. Okay. All right. That's helpful. Thank you. I mean, I wish there was a way they can get people in the back. I don't know if they could, I'm just going to throw this out here. I don't know if they could do one way. One way, one way, one way, the other way. One, yeah, I don't know if that would Is work. That a, what's that way? I think it's just, sense? so it's just not well lit. Well, they've been for light. I mean, yeah. It's, yeah, forget the business like oh, that. Are you talking about the back? Yeah. What, what, what and I don't know that it's paved. Yeah. Well, they would have to do some work there. You know, I mean, they could do, I mean, there's businesses in town that have nice stone gravel entranceways, yeah, back of so, so, you know, just for, you know, for, so for some part. Planters. So, yeah, I mean, it could be, I mean, that's just a thought. I mean, I'm just concerned okay. that, you know. And I guess the other question is if there's a door back there. Yeah. So if someone parks in back there, can they get well, into the Well, our purpose is that someone parking in the back and you have to walk around anyways. Yeah. It's I, I don't think the door would no, have an impact on it. If they had to go and back, who would have to take care of that? The owner yeah. of the building? Yeah. yeah. I mean, yeah, so if they wanted to, I mean, if you had to park back there, there'd probably be some changes. But the only thing is, yeah, is maybe, that, maybe I mean, I always look at it as a successful yeah. business because I hope all point. businesses in town are successful. So what would mm -hmm. happen if, you know, you really do have a, a, a nice sized party going on and then a bunch of people come just mm -hmm. to go to the, yeah. the regular park? So, you know, you can end up with... Well, it looks like the lots on well, either side are paved, too. It would be interesting to see. I mean, you could always have... I don't know, maybe you said this, I mean, just like have even staff, owners and staff in the back, right? That's a good point. Yeah. That just frees up, what, yeah. just five spaces or something. Maybe yeah. more. Mm -hmm. more people yeah. in the back. Yeah, yeah exactly. Yeah. Or something. Yeah. And like you said, ho hopefully they have to park in the back. That means yeah. they're successful. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> mm -hmm. Right. And then he's going to want okay. his staff because he wants his yeah. customers. So, what, what's so I, I'm, that space has already been a pizza uh, or just a restaurant in the past. So yeah. I was just going to have him fill out a zoning application for a change of use for the space that he's occupying now that he's expanding into. But I just wanted to make sure you all were okay with the parking situation. No, care for the, the new part. Are, are the walls going to be blown out, or is it going to still be kept separate where this is? This part now, mm -hmm. that part. Um, it looks like it's the, it's an access you, the dining room. Would be good besides the access, so here's. I think right. I think just a door. Yeah, there's this little thing here down at the bottom with a line through. It says entrance to bar and lounge. Yeah. So it looks like he's keeping most of it intact. In this entrance to the hallway, I don't know if that's there or not now, but it looks like there's two. For the most part, just uh, he's not blowing out all the walls or anything. It looks, it looks like that. Mm -hmm. I mean, yeah. as far as the parking, though, Carrie. I mean, that's. I mean, it's just to make sure that it's doesn't become an issue. Mm -hmm. That's my concern. Yeah, I agree. Yeah. Especially with this part of it. Right. And I just. I mean, I'm just gonna. I'm yeah. just gonna throw some. Bar could be. I mean, uh, you know, if it gets successful. Well, and the thing is, how if we're hanging out longer than just having a meal, you know? How yeah. true value? Uh, how someday like true value moves out. And then another business comes in that's um, like a restaurant or something like that. Mm -hmm. Then all of a sudden you have an issue. That's you could have two issue, two restaurants, and hopefully both are successful. They don't have any parking, and you, you have no place to park. Right. So I'm just saying that if, if they should try to figure out something, especially the back, besides the using other online. areas as well. I mean, yes. that's be my concern. Yes. But well, do you have um, uh, the Harvard store? Uh, did the guy ever get it in writing that they could use it, or are you still trying to get that in writing? Still trying to get it in writing. Okay. But and I had left a message for Earl, but I have not heard back, so I can try and reach out to him again. Right. But what happens if he does get it in writing again, if they change the use of that building to something else, what happens to that in writing document? Not that it's our concern, but it's, right. it would be my concern if some, somebody was going in there. I mean, you look at um, <coughs> places like Dalton's across the street, they yeah, have similar challenge, you yeah, know, yeah. because 
the plaza and the parking is what it is. You really don't have much room mm-hmm. for expansion. And they have a bar and a restaurant. I don't think they're as big as what they're <coughs> proposing yeah. here by any right. means. But they also don't have as much parking as they do. Yeah. But there's only one. Back I think there's two restaurants over there at Dalton, so Dalton's Plaza. Well, the three if you count Subway, but. Yeah, yeah pizza, there's a pizza. Yeah, there's the pizza, yeah, right? uh, Bella something? Yeah, uh, Bella Lisa. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Hmm. Well, they're lucky to Falls because they do have this whole back area that yeah. has a lot of potential for parking. Yeah. That one way idea might be one for them to visit. Yeah, yeah. That's kind of like Vidal's in North Haven. You go down the narrow side on the right, yeah. you head back, and then you come on. That's mm-hmm. Where's that? Mm-hmm. In the plaza? Vidal's. That's um, in the plaza, the other one over there. Yeah, next to the gas station. Wait, Vidal's is next the, to the, 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 the plaza yeah. in the back corner, right? No, you bl- are you thinking of Bellini's? No, Vidal's is on broad, broad down by the broad. overpass. Oh, you're talking about North Haven? Yeah. yeah North Haven. Oh, I'm thinking, uh, I'm sorry, Nathan. Oh, yeah. Uh, oh, no, sorry. no, yeah. Right, right, right. They, I'm in the you wrong have to time. park in back there, and then yeah. you go down. It's a one yeah. way, and then yeah. you come out. Back around. Side. Yeah. Yeah. It's got the dry cleaners in there yep. and stuff like that. That's yeah. vacant now, though, so it'll be interesting. Yeah. 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 It's good. It's packed, too, all the time. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Can you get in there? I went there a couple weeks ago. Or, no, wait. I'm sorry. It's right before Christmas. Yeah, I couldn't get in there. All right. Oh, you have your VIP table? I mentioned, I mentioned, no, no, I, I mentioned, I mentioned Trisha's name and they said, yeah, we're, we're booked for, we're like yeah. rails in New York. <laughs> there's, no, there's nobody in there and they say we're busy. <laughs> I was trying to get in that place, rails in New York City. It's a restaurant in, uh, uh, I think it's the upper east. West side, upper West Side, somewhere around there. And it, it's and yeah, you, Our, it, you've got you, they, people own the table. Oh, that's every fascinating. Night of the, and you can you can't you can go to the bar and have a drink and try to sit there for a few hours and they they and even if there's nobody sitting there, you they can. probably won't let you in oh, there. That's fascinating. I've only been there like five times and I I called for reservations and like they they laugh at you, <laughs> you know. <laughs> you, you. I just want to try one of the meatballs. Mm. Anyhow, off the subject. All right, what do we got left, Carrie? Just application that has been received is a request for a resubdivision at 104 White Hollow Road, so that will be on the agenda for the February 6th meeting. Wait, what is it? A resubdivision, so there's an existing parcel, but it's been carved out and divided up in the past, so now they'd like to divide it even more okay. to make two lots. Um, What's the number? 104 White Hollow. Hollow. Or like Pass Lane Fund mm-hmm. up the hill, right? Mm-hmm. Oh, Pass Lane Fund, that way. Yes. Oh, yeah. Thank you. Good. So that's um, on the agenda for February 6th. Yeah. And then the, from the 20th until April 1st, it may or not be here. Okay. Because that's when that. Season? No, no, oh. work, work season. <laughs> oh, okay. That's when I'm not called. So that's when they say it's, it's yeah. time to go. You gotta go. Yeah. You know. Okay. Get, get it right on 737 Supermax. Where are those things now? Yeah. No one. Yeah. I keep on thinking of that every time I look. Now I look to see. I mean, I know they're, they're not in service, but yeah, I'm starting to look at what the, what the plane is oh. right before I get on. So yeah. anyhow, uh, is there a motion? Oh wait. Um, oh. So wait, so, yeah. Oh, Alex. Oh, oh, go ahead, uh, um, Might be wise for us uh, to revisit um application that we had uh, a few years back. Um, I know this summer to come, um, I think July goes into effect for distilleries. Um, so how the, the whole, um, the liquor permitting got changed and everything. So this summer, um, liquor entities could hold multiple manufacturing permits. So it might be wise for us to revisit the, the farm distilleries to have something in place. Uh, Cause I won't be surprised if you have um, anything like that happening in the state. Uh, I know there's breweries uh, in the state that have mentioned that they want to do that. I know there's vineyards that mentioned in the state that they want to hold multiple permits. Um, 
and that goes into effect, I think, in July. So it might be wise to be proactive. Do you know? Do you have any other language on it? Have you seen the language on it from the state? No, no, no. So, so we have the language for the farm distillery yep. permit. Right. No, no. So, so this, all this is is saying you have multiple yeah. permits. Oh, okay. that's that's all it is. Oh, I so, got you. So you would you. have um, a brewery and a vineyard, a vineyard together. You would have distillery and a vineyard together. Um, oh. Any concoction, um, the state's now allowing, but that then goes into effect in the summer of uh, July. Can we? If we have time, I mean, it looks like we'll only have one thing for next meeting. Mm -hmm. Maybe we can take, take, take a look at re read through it and see what the okay. names are. Well, farm events. We were talking about that. Yes. Revisit that. Yes. In residential, not we started yeah. visiting yeah, it, and then we never. Yeah, but that's what we. That's what we did with kind of show was residential. Yeah, because everything else. Yeah. Right. I actually have a. Let's see. Yeah. Right. I actually have a. I'll, I'll send around the um, this article. Stonington Commission approves plan to let farm expand uses, host events. So that's that was from November. Right. Might be of interest. Yeah. Okay. Do you want to make a motion? Uh, I was going to ask about any talk about usually about who's going to be here. Maybe you said you're not here from like January. But yeah, I'm from, no, from uh, February the February twentieth meeting until the um, April, the middle of April, third uh, third week in April. I'm not sure. So this is our second meeting. So February, we have early February, the third week. Yeah, the twentieth. Right. Six and five. Yeah, I think I am. Right. Sometimes you just try okay. to yeah. see if I can be there. Yeah. yeah. Okay. So, all right. And that's the next, since Ron isn't here, the next oldest person, folk. I'm running the most, I, I don't know, I'm not, I don't, I don't guess. <laughs> I make a motion to adjourn. <laughs> I just second. Is there a second? <laughs> all in favor? I'm not arguing with that. Oh my God, is that a